Welcome to my YouTube channel and this is the scene that I'm going to paint and this is the end result. I'm going to lead you through the painting process of that picture. Please subscribe to the channel, um, click the link at the end or the little logo in the bottom right hand corner that you can see at the moment um, and enjoy. Well hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In my studio this morning, uh, looking at a subject that I've got up on the screen. It's um, basically from a walk that I did around Gallywood. It's Back Lane, it was uh, a few days ago. So I've decided to put that down onto watercolour paper. Uh, in, well, my impression really. And um, when you look at these um, country lanes where you've got a lot of greenery um, you know a lot of people say there's nothing there um, but if you're handled in the correct way then um, we could be on to a winner I've put the basic drawing down on my, onto my watercolour paper I've got my material set up I've got um, just a, four brushes there a mop brush flat uh, a small little rigger and another brush may add to that uh, but basically uh, water pot paints at the ready um, so um, let's get started well that's the scene I'm working to this morning and uh, it's um, just basically a country lane back lane in Gallywood and uh, you've got the tree to the left a large tree a bit of distance hedging to the right, treated simply, you know, create a bit of atmosphere with shadow work. Um, did ponder about putting a figure in, but we'll see how that goes later on. Um, so um, I've got my drawing down onto watercolour paper and let's get cracking. Okay, well, I've tried to get my mixing palette in shot, which I think I've achieved okay. There's my water jar, that's just going to be slightly out of picture. Um, but um, first thing to do is to wet a large mop brush and uh, get some basic background colours on. I'm going onto dry paper um, and I'm going to just lightly damp, uh, just putting a bit of water, splashing a bit of water on my colours really, just to sort of freshen them up. Um, it's going to be a summer scene so it needs to be quite fresh uh, that's what all I do really just drop a little bit of water onto with the with the large brush and that should be sufficient okay first thing distance well we'll use cobalt blue picked up some cobalt blue there start at the back edge of the mix and tray this is the distant colors uh, a little bit more cobalt could be cerulean really matter ultramarine would do but I prefer a less stronger um, yellow and um, blue for that and the yellow I'm going to use some raw sienna and all I'm going to do I'm going to pick out the distant area that's there it's um it's very sort of cool and uh, distant color I'm going to add just a tad of blue to that right in the distance a bit stronger than that let's go just a little bit deeper there we go nice deep blue now I'm going to add a bit of cadmium so I'm mixing pretty much on the paper really a bit more cadmium as the greenery comes out into uh, the more slightly more middle distance I suppose you could call it um, I'm painting over the foreground tree, uh, finishing at the edge there. But I'm going to use this little bit as a sunlit area. So I'm trying to keep a hard edge there. All will be revealed later on. Now I'm cleaning the brush. And in the lower area of the sky, I'm putting a touch of red, cadmium red. And that will all run down into that greenery very very nicely and then either side cadmium um, into that cadmium red or 
onto the paper next to it will go a bit more blue, a bit more red, a bit more blue that side. I'm going to have the sunlight coming from the left. So I've introduced a little bit of the red there. Try and keep a hard edge there. Not vital, but try and introduce a little bit of that colour there. Bang some blue back in. There we go. Um, and trying to make a bit of a jagged edge where some of it introduces and some of it doesn't. Just so you can see where that distance area finishes. Great. Right, now we pick up cadmium again and go in. Um, this is the sort of like the start of the tree really and the hedging this side. A um, bit of blue gone in, a bit of splashing. Look at that, all good fun. Um, you know, this is this is what watercolour painting is all about. Um, having confidence with the colour, yep, that that is a big thing. Having confidence with what you're doing, yes. Um, but you also want a bit of fun with it. You know, a lot of people say, oh, that's a thing. Me. Just keep working. Yes, keep working the, the colours in. A bit more cadmium now. As we come into the more foreground greens. There we are. And now a bit of lemon. Yellow. Or cadmium lemon, if you like. And immediately, can you see where I've got depth? And that is the key. The depth there with the more richer greens coming forward. And then finally, along this track, try and keep it nice and sharp around the edges. Um, then I, when I take the tape, take the tape away, you will then be able to see uh, a sort of a, like a framed image of it. There we go. Brilliant. Look at that. Okay. Now I'm going to clean the brush. Along the edge, I'm going to put a bit of light red in the distance. So, because there is sort of like a bit of a, a bit of a warm area along the edge of the track or the road. Then as I go into the more middle distance, I'm adding burnt sienna while it's still damp. Not everywhere, but just in place to give that earthy sort of autumny feel. And then just so I hit the foreground, I'm hitting red in there because that will go very well, cadmium red, with the greenery. And also, just float a bit of that in, in places, into your greenery. It uh, will all dry in, but it's um, always a nice thing to, um, to have, a bit of that. And once you introduce that to it, it becomes uh, slightly more... Um, um, intense. It makes the greens look more intense, basically. Then, with a damp, flat brush, like that, I'm going to just tidy up the edges, lifting off a bit of paint in the distance. And now I'm going to use a light red with a touch of cobalt. Let's start a different part of the palette touch of cobalt in there to kill that off, make it a grey, there we are, totally uninteresting grey because that is as the lane goes round the corner, then touch more red in there, perhaps a little bit, still a touch of blue, plenty of water, this has got to be light, much lighter than the greenery, and I'm touching here and there um, the, um, the greens, uh, and browns, not everywhere, but just the odd little touch. Then as I come forward, I'm adding a little, almost neat, into that damp mix, light red. Touch more strength needed to that in the foreground. And then, cadmium red. And if you notice, I've used the flat brush to create texture in this foreground. That's why I picked up the flat brush, so that we create a bit of texture right in the foreground. It gives that sort of closeness feel to the look of the um, first washes. Okay, let's allow that to dry. Now I'm just lifting off, I've got a 
damp brush I'm just lifting off a bit of that distance because I want to keep that fairly dry I'm just stroking in one or two harder edges it, it all helps to give texture to the road really and, and that sort of levelness to the road just got to keep watching that that distance doesn't run back into that too much it won't as it begins to dry so I'm almost lightening that up by lifting paint away. You see a damp brush will lift paint. It wants to absorb paint or water. So that will lift the water out of the paper. Over damp it lays the water on. So clean the brush, dry it off onto... Um, I've got an old towel here. And then pull it across the area that you need lighter than the distance and that's that little area there hopefully that uh, will stay good and we've got a lovely bit of mystical depth to the whole thing next I'm going to paint that large tree it's almost dry but not completely which may benefit hopefully and I'm using the flat brush again I'm using cadmium yellow with Windsor Blue. More cadmium to start. Windsor Blue is very powerful. If you notice, I took over the, 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 the colour. So I've got to get that back with the cadmium. So be very careful. And um, I'm going to put in this, this distant, this, this large tree here. Keep it simple. Not worrying now about too much in the background. And uh, just wetting up a little bit more. Remember there are gaps, but it's quite dense also. Um, and that does spring right out into that area there. And do broad washers in the centre. But as you come to the outside edge, as the paint, you know, the brush bit gets less paint attached, then you can start just dabbing smaller areas. And, of course, the benefit of this is it's still still wet so I'm still getting sort of like a, a bit of a sense of, uh, uh, of well a running of colour I'm going to leave a bit of sky showing there nice to have little bits of sky always try and keep bits of sky within your areas of um, leafing because it does make a big difference not too much sky on that outside edge. In actual fact, that's mostly greenery there. But a little bit of sky there. That's all working well. I'm not overworking this. Just laying that in. It's just beginning to dry. And it's blurring up here. So these could be distant trees. Then when I can overlay onto the dry area, it brings those trees in the foreground. Um, not too dense here we can see quite a lot now as I'm painting over the trunk we can see quite a lot of that trunk area not too much in the lower area there good that's good right now I'm adding more blue and a touch of burnt sienna a bit of burnt sienna with the Windsor blue it will give you a green I don't want it too dark at this stage but fairly dark because we have hedging here that runs into the distance and for a start off that is quite dark leaving now this time because of the ivy on the trunk of that tree I'm going to leave it white or green at this stage now as we come up it gets rather open so the top of the hedge is rather open and what you do to that side of the trunk do to that side as well initially just a small area there because it's running into the distance just before that dries more blue and more brown to make a real dark green just for the underside that little area there just along and one or two little touches here and there at the top a little bit there quite jagged along that bottom edge is a ditch there I think so that's going to be quite jagged now I'm cleaning the brush gently adding a little raw sienna 
to that as well. See where the green's gone less intense? This is what I'm looking for now to blend it through into the distance. Still got a bit of a bit of colour to it at the moment. Right, now I'm taking a bit more off the brush. So it's getting lighter, less intense. Trying to take even a lot more off the brush now and get less detailed. Always vital this and it's still slightly damp there as the trees or the hedge goes around the corner. That's what I'm looking for. A lovely feeling of depth. Must get that depth. See how it's gone blurred because it's still slightly damp as it goes around the corner there. Look at that. Blur that in. And that is the hedging running away into the distance. Next we need the darker area to that tree. So I'm picking up that similar to that green there. But add a bit more yellow with that just to start. With a blue gone in that's nice. Not too worried about that. And a bit of burnt sienna. Let's give a little bit more depth to this colour. And I'm catching it just while it's still a little on the damp side. Particularly in the lower area there. Some of that is distant green so we don't hang out with that too much. Now you have to be a little careful here. Because, you know, the times I've got overexcited where I think, oh, that's nice. A nice bit of depth there. And all of a sudden, you look back and think, oh, I've overdone it now. I've got rid of all the nice fresh greens that I had and I've over painted with all the dark greens. Well it is dark but it's uh, not too dark. Um, we can go in with one dark cut tone later on. There we go. That. Nice bit of depth, a little bit of density to that, that greenery. and. Um, I'm going to put in a bit of brown here and there. That's, it, it is brown, it's burnt sienna. Um, but that adds a bit, in my opinion. Uh, you know, helps to yet again enhance the greens because it's more or less a red brown, really. Uh, and that just helps to enhance the greens. And I'm going to now go in with the really dark. Plenty of Blue and brown, Windsor, Burnt Sienna. Now I'm starting off, now this you only need in small areas. Don't want, now that is a local or a branch associated with this tree. Some are and some are associated with, that's background trees there where it's soft. And this is going to be the more foreground darker areas. Let's put this dark area in amongst the light area there. There you go. Look at that. This where it crosses the trunk and just hangs down. Just hangs down this. It should hold fairly sharp there. It's all about having fun really with the um with the colours that you've got. Quite dark at the top. Just Holding that top side. This just shows the light coming through. See where we can begin to see the light now coming through those um, branches. Quite a dense little dark area there. I'm, I'm looking at the subject, but on the other hand, I'm trying to design my own um, uh, nice looking tree as well. You know, uh, it's got to be, you know, in keeping with what's there. But on the other hand, you know, you've got to give it your style. And that's what I'm trying to do, give it my my particular tree style, really. A little bit there. Good. I think that is pretty much the tree on the left, uh, the main leafing. Now I'm going to look at the trunk. Now the trunk is ivy covered. So I'm using blue green in other words same two colours burnt sienna 
Prussian blue or uh, Windsor and very dark to try and lose a bit of paint I've not got got too much paint on the brush there there we go nice dark and I'm trying to allow the light color to give that ivy texture textured ivy effect like that I think that's probably picked up the ivy quite well the ivy doesn't go up particularly far it may go up a branch that heads out to there but other than that when you paint the ivies um, that runs up trunks I always leave plenty of gaps because that indicates that you know you've got that little bit of light shine to them um, now to that I'm adding more burnt sienna and this will be the trunk the brown takes over the blue and away we go with the dark trunk now this dark trunk I'm going to use the flat as well is um, it's not ivy covered on the right hand side it's um, just the trunk so we can see the difference there now between the trunk and uh, um, and the rest of the uh, branch there branch there it's one that shoots off central there which um, I suppose is quite um, quite interesting I'm just trying to keep an eye on what it is I've got and what I'm trying to achieve um, with my own um, uh, devices really um, my own particular picture oh and this trunk of course heads off it's the main part again it heads off up the tree just leaving one two little gaps to indicate where tree branches come away um, gonna use this flat for a little while longer and then I shall then change to around quite dip, quite large up there right clean that now I'm changing to around and I'm using a bit more burnt sienna with this just to give it a bit more light and that branch heads off up there well there's a branch that pulls away there so just add a bit more paint to that and that has a little bit of ivy on it but not a great deal yep that's looking good no problems there at all at this stage good right get this brush loaded with plenty of paint and we can get the feeling of dry a little bit of dry brush work in there all helps um, some of the branches are covered by the greenery I'm going a bit darker down that back edge widen that up a little just so it looked a little bit so sort of like anemic there really need a bit more depth and then I'm going to paint um, that's mainly the, the large areas of, of, of tree work um, oh yeah there's another area there and that breaks out there and there again before it goes back into the trees um, so that's good now I'm going to use the small rigger and that needs plenty of paint so it doesn't hold too much water plenty of paint on there to get these well, small dark twigs really now that heads off this then goes up there like that, got a branch there, a branch that comes and swings down. Not sure, sure, sure whether that's the right way it goes, but there you go. And then, of course, that can then swing out there, that can head off up, and then that branch then comes away there and heads off up. You can then see this one that's supporting that. Um, just a matter of getting a few branches in where the gaps are really uh, that's a bit thicker there uh, that heads off up there we've got a branch that comes away there um, we mustn't neglect this side of the tree you know it's quite often you you know you get so bogged down with the center part of the tree 
the, the, the focal area that you tend just to lose the um, um, the general feeling of the rest of the picture really that's good let that all dry a bit darker then in amongst the greenery there that's the ivy and then the lovely trunk back edge of the trunk heads down there just see a little bit of trunk in amongst that ivy it's not that dense um, okay now let's work our way up picking up a little bit more paint you have some larger areas of branch work coming in um, put, let's justify that by putting that area there oh let's let's just do that there we go that's better justifies it all you see you know once you put a, a branch in it's got to come from somewhere maybe under the greenery so you can't see where it's joined but um, you've got to justify the fact that it's there now you can just start flicking in some smaller stuff don't overdo the branches you always add but once they're there you, it's not easy to take away and uh, that is always a uh, a fault that I had anyway good well I'm going to leave that as sufficient at this moment in time well I say that but just one branch heading off there just to fill in on that and another branch to justify the thickness of that area there good okay now I'm going to concentrate on this clump of greenery now to start I'm going to look at the distant area there so the green is going to be less intense so I'm going back with the cobalt blue um, may even have a bit of raw sienna in there to start uh, so it's less intense notice there you get a green that's not as strong that's it um, and um, that's it and there that will appear just there just remove some paint so I can get some let's remove some paint so I can get some soft edges amongst that bit of light that little sparkle of light coming there remember I left that earlier on um, seems to have worked quite well let's put a little bit of this to show the edge of the tr the track there there we go and this is the distant greenery of hedging behind this what will be slightly well very much a foreground area there a little bit darker so I've picked up a little bit of the darker colour now because it'll be slightly shaded good that's sufficient that's looking fine no problems with that right now I'm going to clean that brush now I'm using the flat again to produce this clump of greenery here and overall it's quite dark um, but you know don't want to go too dark too early so I'm using that color the darker color than I had that side and I'm going to just use a slightly different technique for this just dragging down just trying to get a sense of density within the leafing of this um, tree the greenery we had actually um, dominates the background so we're not going to have any problems there I'm scratching around a bit to try and get texture like that a bit of overhanging greenery this is all the very light stuff a bit of cadmium now give it a fresher green see well just a tad more water with that that's it there you go so trying to get a different strata of tree really coming in that uh, bit more blue a bit more cadmium freshen it up a bit of brown freshen it up nice nice fresh greens there you can see them on the 
so I'm just going straight in with the paint and then trying to pick up the small little overhanging fresh greenery colours that um, that we can see in this foreground. There's lots of light areas, but nice bit of red there, nice to come through. See how that little bit of red come through and dominate the um, the picture? Just leave a bit of bank there. Bit of greenery, a bit fresher greenery in that point. That's it, there we go, look at that. Can't grumble at that, can you? That's got to be, that's got to be sort of sufficient for that sort of feeling of um, greenery. A bit of density here and there. Just remember to paint out to your edges. So often you can, so like, you know, something good in the lower part, but you're not being gone right out of the top and you've got to fill it in at the end and you don't always get the right mix and um oh yes done it been there many many times when you're learning don't think that what you're running on to is something that has never been you know colin steed never gets this well he does or he has done in the in the in the past and that's the reason he doesn't do it quite as often now because that's how i'm introducing a little bit of that greener on the edge there now just to show the slope of the bank just pull them down get a bit of texture i did that once the the brush has run out of paint and it just shows a bit of texture onto the grasses really now a little bit in the foreground oh yeah i've, I've been there done it i had all the problems that everyone else gets and um I just pull a bit of that green across so you can play that it's sharper texture there we are look at that look clean the brush out on it and just pull a little bit of that down so it's not too basic line right now I'm going to put the really dark so we've got more or less just two dark tones really and for this really dark color I'm going to use Indian red with the Windsor blue now this will give the real intense color We'll put a bit of cadmium with that, just to make certain it looks green, but it's going to be very, very dark. Remove a lot of paint from the brush. Don't go up to the top too early, because it'll be too dark right at the top, and it wants to be textured. A bit of density there, running up. There's ivy, there's all sorts of bits and bobs going on. Um, within that clump of greenery don't cover those little red patches up they they all look quite interesting little branches hanging down keep that fairly one or two dark areas but keep it fairly light uh, because there could well there is a little bit of light catching that and then of course on this outside edge you can always sometimes the finger helps just to spread the color that's good and then I'm heading down now this really dark color will actually show up the light sparkles underneath and that's what we're looking for just a touch along the edge not too much there we go the grasses perhaps in the distance or middle distance there um, nice bit of texture there See how, how that green is really shining now. It's not, you can't appreciate light until you put the dark on. Uh, that's one th good thing to remember when you're painting these sorts of subjects. Um, uh, you know, you can't get the feeling of light. You know, you can put light colours on, but until you've got darks somewhere near them, around them, within them, you won't see the real strength that you're looking for. You go as dark as you like without light, so you haven't got any depth. Now, this colour, I'm also going to bring over this side so that we tend to marry the two together. You know, we don't want one side of the picture to look uh, from a different part or a different part, you know, a different part of the picture. In other words, a different picture, I suppose. You know, it's got to relate to, so the texture of that 
got to introduce a bit of that this side and a bit of the dark colour too because if you don't you're um, you're creating one tree one side of your um, painting and another tree the other so now we're finally getting in these really dark touches that hopefully will give you a sense of real strong sunlight coming through those trees good let's allow that to dry okay we have some dark brown branches so I'm going to use burnt sienna for this um, burnt umber for this with Windsor again trying to get some really dark browns it'll be a greeny brown with the Windsor blue always creates a greeny brown unless you put a lot of brown with it of course then it does go um, more brown than green and we do have sort of like a, a trunk area there that slips away like that quite a, a large affair but other than that it's more or less the dark green that we had before so we're going to add Windsor and Indian Red and then we're just going to put in uh, it's actually a bulked tree really a bulky looking tree so let's go paint these final little um, fennel of a, of a tree so that gives you a tree trunk effect that goes up into that greenery above uh, and that probably starts somewhere there we've got another dark area here that's very much sort of but that heads up into the distance um, put some small branches on that shortly um, there is ah oh, that actually extends to here right so that's where that tree comes in there you go let's see where we've got that and then it grows it gets lost above in the um, uh, the greenery of the above there there we are branch coming off there the branch perhaps coming off there right let's let's i think this is pointed quite nicely oh there you go there you are once that points you can then pull some branches in with that um with with the point or the side of that brush there we are and you can pull up one or two little uh, pieces there good and that produces a sense of a cluster of hedging uh, with some tree work uh, all blended in um, it's just the final shadows well my shadow mix will be Windsor blue and Indian red it's my shadow mix more blue than red and there's a bit of green there that would be useful to pull into that shortly as I come forward the initial shadow in the distance don't be too dark many times I've gone in too dark with the initial shadows in the distance so let's just let's just see where we are with this before we yeah so even that's a little dark so I'm just adding a little bit more water to that taking a bit of color off the of the brush sweep that across there we are and that take a bit more color off of that goes up there and blends with that that's the start of a tree that's in the distance it's also a little bit there as it goes away a little bit of, and you could just blend a bit of that with the finger um, but it gives a lovely mystical feel that's what I'm looking for in the distance then we start where the bank is there like that and where the tree is and that runs along there like that that pulls up in even though I'm doing it with my finger there we go soften that up what about just another little area there just pulling across there we are it's all nice and soft now we can go in with broader washes across the track like that from the large tree yeah. brilliant 
and away we go. And as I come forward, I'm going to add a little bit more red to this. It's, it's, uh, slightly jagged there. And then all of a sudden, that runs up into that. And it's slightly sort of broken. It comes down. See, I'm trying to leave difficult when you're slapping in these shadows, but trying to leave. I'm going to use a bit more red now, a bit more Indian red. There you are. A lot more Indian red. Look at that. Isn't that violent? But hey ho. And then banging in some blue. And that's where you get atmosphere from otherwise could be a rather dull looking picture. There's nothing dull about this one. No, sir. This requires depth of colour. A bit more red, a bit more blue. Don't be afraid to put in shadows, but don't put them everywhere. You know, make certain that they're they're put in with with a bit of strength. And a bit of thought, but not just anywhere. Now, you could say I've lost the track a little. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, with a, just a slightly damp brush, I'm going to just drag with the point to start with and then just pull through around the edges. See the way I'm dragging that, that down to try and give a sense of going into the foreground a little bit defining the edges in the foreground too there we are now you can see the difference between the track and the road it's and um, or the road and the um, color that in and the um, greenery itself and then finally rigor uh, Indian red Windsor blue in actual fact we're going where that greenery is as well and these are those lovely little edges that that really do particularly if you can get them in before it completely dries you get softness uh, particularly in the shadow area that you've just laid in um, particularly under there along that area there getting less and less as we go away into the distance there just pull those up so they're not too too dominant. Good. Nice little bits of, well, what are they? Don't know. Uh, undergrowth texture. A little bit there just to enhance it a little. A little bit there. Get rid of one or two of those white edges, but not completely. So that gives the, the whole thing sparkle. That's good. A bit more blue because I'm going to introduce a figure in the distance more of a sort of a hazy feel to this figure I'm going to use a brush as a mool stick and this helps to give scale and um, always nice to give a bit of scale I think Like that and this figure will have be talking to another figure here child perhaps slightly smaller figure perhaps they're looking at a dog well and those two figures will require shadow well all you do is you use their legs and just spread the paint and all of a sudden they are in shadow in the distance. Let's show the little doggy a bit more. Here we are. Good. Let's uh, remove their out outer edge and see um, the final result. Well, there you have the picture 
uh, photograph that I took, made a little pencil sketch, but mainly working from the photograph itself. Um, and this is the final result. Just pan out here a little bit. As you can see, I've got my mix and, mix and tray uh, to the right. Um, but that is the final result. Just going to pan in a little bit closer. Well, that's it. That is the final result. Just got to sign up, really. Uh, dark colour, paint that I've used before. Uh, where shall I sign it? Um, let's sign it down in this bottom left-hand corner. So I say, always use the paint that you've used. And, whoops. And just a basic signature. So that everybody knows who painted it. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed that demonstration. Um, why not have a bash at something like this, or even this one? Uh, all you've got to do is um, um, paint along with me, freeze, you know, stop the video, <coughs> excuse me, paint up to a particular stage, and, um, <coughs> sorry about that, and um, <coughs> work your way through uh, until um, you get to somewhere near this. It's only your version, obviously. It's not a um, um, it's not a complete copy, so just you know put your bit of life into it, um, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, bottom right hand corner. You will see the logo, um, and um, happy painting, and we'll see you all again very very soon. Thank you for watching.